Kevin. Roll call. Charles Randy Sneed. Dylan Colburn. Sean Harley. George Nall. Suzanne Umbaugh. Derek Jones. Lisa Mulaney. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For anybody out there that sees this new face up here on the board, um, we had uh, Dustin resigned and the Democratic Party appointed Sean to take his place, so we're not sitting here with an empty seat. So welcome Sean and thank you for taking the position. Thank you and uh, hope to do my best for the residents of the town. Minutes of 11-21-2018. Any additions, corrections? I move to pass the minutes for 11-21-18. Second. There's a motion and a second. Let's pass the minutes. Any further discussion? Uh, I'd like to make one correction. Okay. Um, I believe in the minutes it says yes. EMS director. Uh, we set a workshop for 6:30. Minute seven. The big deal. We set it for 6.30, we just didn't start it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, right. we did not set, in the minutes, we were going to do the workshop at 6.30. Mm -hmm. We had to set it for 7 because of the police commission. That's right. So, that's why we moved yeah, it. We just changed it. That's good, then. Yeah. Good for you. That's fine. With no other discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'm going to abstain because I was not here. Opposed? One abstention, four, one. Pass. Citizens' input. Come on, Carol. Nothing. Nothing. No. Town looks nice to decorate Christmas decorations. <clears throat> All right, well, that's a plus. Anyone else? Attorney report. A few things, guys, just to keep you kind of up to speed on stuff, but. Uh, Regarding the uh, the TIF district out there, that is, I believe, concluded. Um, it's basically the declaratory resolution, confirmatory resolution, economic development plan, tax and tax statement. All that's been recorded. It's been mailed to the DLGF. It's been mailed to the county <coughs> auditor. Um, I've got a copy of that if anybody wants to take a look at that, but it's the recorded copy, but that should conclude it. So I think you've got a recorded copy. Yeah. Okay, so if anybody wants this, you're welcome to have it. I can make other copies and circulate it. It's all interesting. Okay. Sure. Boring. <laughs> Boring. Um, the farm lease, guys, there's nothing to act on this evening, but I just do want to let you know that the, uh, the bid specs were published uh, November 29 and December 6. Bids are due. Uh, Close of business December the 17th. At our next meeting on the 19th, we're going to open those bids and award that farm lease. I have three conflict of interest disclosures from Ed Barkus, from John Vanderweel, and from Mark Vanderweel uh, because their positions are appointed positions, it does require the approval of the governing body. So I've got those for your consideration. Uh, we need to have those around before the end of the year. They're basically the same as we've done in years past. Take a vote to approve those as what would be appropriate. Sorry, I didn't mean to take away from that bigger <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'll talk to Jerry that I will. They'll need one, yes. For series. 
to provide just a real quick summary, uh, both John and Mark Vanderwill obviously are affiliated with the Dual Best Center. The town purchases supplies, materials, what have you, from uh, from that facility. Um, so that's something that needs to be disclosed and basically the, the form. Ed uh, works for Country Chevrolet. Occasionally, he will bid uh, on a vehicle uh, for the town or provide a quote for a vehicle. Um, and that's the rationale there for that conflict disclosure. in June, he signed an agreement that he was going to repay the town the sum of $837.39 because he had used uh, more benefit days than he had earned. He signed this agreement, he acknowledged that he owed that amount, and he also indicated that he was going to pay $50 per month beginning August 1 of 2018. He hasn't paid anything. Come to find out that he was also owed money from the Argus Fire Department because of service there. Um, I'm not sure of that amount, but Lisa did contact him and ask if the amount that was owed to him from the fire department could be applied to the balance that he owes to the town. Um, apparently at first maybe he indicated that he would do that, but then he changed his mind and said no he was not. Um, the fire department is a separate standalone entity. It needs to pay Mr. Scott what is owed and due to him, um, but we're also at the point where he's not paid anything on this amount that he said that he wanted to uh, he wanted to, but he agreed to pay. Um, so Lisa suggested that we bring that to suit um, and collect on that. Before I do that, I wanted your approval or blessing uh, to move that forward in the form of a uh, collection matter to be filed in the Superior Court number two. So he had money coming from the fire department? He has full money coming. And did we not, didn't the county used to, could if somebody owed property taxes, take that money without? That was property taxes. Um, That's a different entity altogether. Seeing as how the town contracts with the fire department, this is a situation we might get into. And we regulate what's paid to them. We can't hold it without this, right? What without, you're saying? without him agreeing to do it, we. We could be getting into more trouble than it's worth, to be honest. For like eight hundred and thirty-seven dollars and thirty-nine cents, and if we want to collect that, um, I think the best way to do that is to move it forward on small claims in Spirit Court Number Two. The good news is I think we can tack on attorney fees and add to that total. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, if, if he doesn't want to do what we would consider to be the, the proper thing here to, to relinquish the money that's owed to him from the fire department, then we have to be Okay. Is there a motion to go ahead and I make a motion to continue with the collections? I'll second that. There's a motion and a second to go ahead and go to collections. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same side, motion carried. You got a good poker face tonight. I'm telling you, you're just sitting down there so somber tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's all I had. I was going to say, man. I'm going to accept the attorney report. A motion, how about a second? A second. Motion and a second to accept the attorney report. Does anybody have any other questions before we go on? <clears throat> Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Board openings, Plan Commission and Police Commission. 
and we'll have an opening on the BCA, but I do not have the resignation letter yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. And the one for the police commission, does it have to be a board member? Cool. He wanted to stay on as a citizen. I don't know if he can do that. What's your question again, George? Sean is on the council. He was also on the police commission. The police commission being a paid position. Yeah, we have the, it's either statute or ordinance. Basically, if you are on the police commission and you were also on the council, then you're waiving your pay, I believe, on the police commission. But I think there's more to it than just, I think there's some political party affiliation requirements, if I remember right. We looked into this maybe a month well, ago. Well, Sean's a Democrat, so he could take Dustin's place as a Democrat as the council. Okay, then we would just need a Democrat citizen. Well, right? he was a he was council. He was liaison to the police commission, but he was also a member of the police right, commission. Right. Right. So you know, he legally was a member. I figured since Sean was taking. Dustin's spot and Dustin did not receive any pay for police commission Correct. that that's kind of where Sean would fall mm -hmm. then Sean's position would be open what Sean is asking is can he retain his citizen position without going into Dustin's council position in relinquishing the pay yes no, whatever works then. I, just I, would, I would like to remain on the police commission because I have spent a lot of time on there many years and I enjoy that and I feel I like do a good job for the town and for the department at that. And, um, I really don't want to, I know where it was when I started and I know where we're at today and I would hate to see that. It's hard to find people and um, we have good people on there. Now if Sean does not get elected again next year. Is there a possibility that he could remain as as a citizen member then? Okay, and then we could appoint another council member as a liaison, not as a member. Dustin kind of of both positions. Do you see what I'm saying? I understand. And is there a possibility? Yes. Um, I think it's going to depend on the composition of the board at that time. And again, with that political party, we kind of have to be conscious of that. But if there were two Democrats on it at that point in time, um, then that could be an issue, could be a problem. Okay, right now, we <coughs> say Sean takes Dustin's place. We have an opening for Democrats as citizens. We don't find any Democrats as citizens. Can we not go and appoint a Republican? What was the language in that? Yes, you can. According to the language, if one cannot be found, okay, but I think I have an independent that's interested. Plus, we also had another person who was interested that we didn't appoint. Right, mm -hmm. but that is a Republican position. Right. And so I'm just saying I think I have an interest. Okay. I have not received the letter yet, but I've been told verbally mm -hmm. that they would like, and they are independent, so that means that they are of a different Mind, we prefer to follow the statute the best we can if we can, but if it's not possible, then I think there can be a way to fill the spot without the political party requirement. Okay, so the opening we have right now is citizen on police commission. BZA, or plan, which he was also on which? Planning Commission. Planning Commission. So we have a serious need for one of you to be on the Planning Commission. <laughs> you were going to go home and ask your wife, did you ever ask her? I'll step up and yeah. No, I never did ask. You know, oh. <laughs> they meet once a month, first Tuesday of every month, and we are rewriting the land use book. So, plan oh, out some hours. <laughs> okay. 
I'm sorry, but we and we also are looking for more members that have a professional background that would be useful on the plan commission. We need three of those. Besides the council member. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Throw, throw my name in there. I'll just say I can't do it. <laughs> hey. You have to give me a letter of interest. <coughs> okay. <laughs> or when you, you go to vote officers in January, we'll just appoint. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a letter at all. All right, down to the next one. EMS director. This has been um, on the plate for quite a while, as everybody knows, Richie is stepping down at the first of the year. Um, life changes, involvement, he said he still wants to be on the department and active with fire and EMS, and he just has other obligations pressing that he wants to fulfill family-wise, which I don't blame him at all. We all go through those. We had two very good candidates tonight. Um, both with outstanding resumes and uh, good references. So, with that being said, would you two stand up so everybody can see who you are and, uh, and introduce yourself if they don't know? I'm Sarah McCollum. I'm an EMT. <laughs> Peter DeVos, been an EMT going on 21 years. Fireman 17 and just look to move the EMS service forward in the positive direction. Thank you. Okay, we spent the last uh, few days talking about it, I guess, one on one, and we had our meeting earlier tonight. So, with that, does anyone have a motion of who they would like to have as EMS director? I'd like to make a motion to nominate Sarah McCollum as director of the EMS department. Is there a second for Sarah? There's a motion to accept Sarah. Second. Is there any other discussion on having Sarah as director? Not all in favor of having Sarah as our new EMS director signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Reasoning for this, and we got to say this because I just don't want everybody going out here being upset. Pete's done an excellent job as EMS assistant director and EMT in fire, and I hope he will continue to do so. Um, Sarah, we might call her the newbie, she's from out of town, uh, but she's going to put in some time. Uh, Pete does have a full-time job, which he was going to work around, and both of you are very well qualified. We're looking for something new right now, and we're going to take a step out and take a chance. So with that, I'd like to thank both of you. I don't think we're hoping both of you are very qualified that you can work together. Yes. I think you would complement each other. I truly do. So if you can work together, I think that would be a real strength for the department. Okay. IHCDA grant opportunity. Suzanne. George? Okay. Yeah. We forgot about the little business. Oh, we have a little business? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank Sorry, Suzanne. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other old business is this. Uh, we've been working on getting a grant to build a new uh, EMS station. And uh, so when we agreed to do this through, uh, let me think of her name now, but anyhow. Shannon. Shannon. Shannon, yeah. Anyhow, the first step was to get an architect, meeting with architects, and have them. Uh, lay out plans and show us, you know, see where we wanted to go and what 
we want it to look like and all this and that. So uh, Shannon sent us a list of people that she has worked with because she's you know, been doing with the 4-H and different ones here. And uh, so she came back with two, the Troyer group out of uh, Mishawaka, and then this one is uh, Arcos, A-R-K-O-S design. And uh, looks like they're also out of Mishawaka. And what I think and what I'd like to see is we need to get these people down here um, possibly a next meeting, maybe get one of them here, say uh, 6.30 or quarter to 7 and get the other one here a little later and talk to them and, and uh, start seeing what they want to do and what they can do for us so we can get this rolling because to get this grant going we have got to get, like I said, we, this is the first step, we've got to get this part done. So that's just my opinion is we need to get them down here by the next meeting and uh, see what they can do for us and what we need to do working with them. Well, first of all, I think we need a kind of a direction of what we even want. Well, that's why you can talk to them because we don't have a clue really to, you know, these people have, uh, Troyer, especially, they, they've done the new uh, Lakeville, uh, the renovation and new construction of Lakeville. They also did the South Bend Fire Station, the new one, number nine. They've done the uh, town of Milford. They've done Milber uh, Middlebury, the ports, and uh, different ones. So they've got a lot of experience, and so they know what the show is. And, uh, maybe to give us some guidance and direction because you're not not have ever built one of these buildings yeah we don't really know what to do this other group here um, I'm not sure they, they're acting like that they've got they've got a lot of experience but I don't see a list of anything that they have done unless anyone knows any architects local thing. So, no, we tried that with the station we have now, you see what we got. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I think we need to know what our needs are. They will fit that. But right, we need to right. Know, yeah. We they, need to be specific with what the need is. Yeah, and they, and that's what these people can show us. Cause we don't, they would show us our need. We need to know our need. We've already went through the needs of that. We know that we need a new building, and we know why. We've already voted on all this. We've already allocated specifics, the money for it. Specifics. I mean, <clears throat> how, what do you want? With mentions, what sizes, what do you want? But you, that's, the, that's the chief of the fire department. <laughs> but it, Mark, I mean, how many trucks are we going to uh, fit in there? How much? Well, well that's, what, that's what that's what you have marked. That's what we have marked for it in different ones. That's they're the ones that's going to make that decision as to how big it is, how many trucks. Then how they many need days. to be here for that meeting. They need to be here. So we need that's, to yeah. have a joint meeting. Definitely. Because we don't know how many bays you need. You guys know how many bays you need. Uh, how long they need to be, what it would take. You know, we've gave you some thoughts, and I, you know, my thoughts were always to have a drive-through so the trucks could be drove through, but that's still, you know, you the guys that's gonna to have to make the decision in offices, what do you need, training rooms. Okay, set it up. Well, I try your you may want to wait to the first of the week to call them. Mr. Troyer just passed away earlier this week. The owner of the Troyer Group, the founder, he's the one that built the ark down in Kentucky. He just passed away earlier this week, so there that company's a little in disarray right now. They reached out and they said and they were also recommended to me by somebody that said that they worked with the Marshall County Stellar Group and that they were wonderful. So yeah. All right, then anybody else have any other old business? Um, yeah, uh, as liaison on redevelopment, um, I reached out to, to Mark Vanderweel. Um, and Paul, you could definitely back some of this up, I'm sure. Um, their housing contract with the developer worked out. 
uh, just fine. Last week, we'll find out next week. Right, exactly. Um, well, he's saying it, it worked out, and uh, they're going to have two lots purchased by the end of the month, and one per quarter from there. Um, so hopefully, we can start growing it. You know, some urban housing. So. This is taking place on Cornish Heights. Yeah, colonial it's a new zone. Or, yeah, colonial estates, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is a new park to colonial estates. Okay, is that it? <laughs> well, this was part of the Stella, and it's also been in the works for a little bit. IHCDA, Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority, they have a program <coughs> to assist lower middle income families to acquire a new home. These families must have a working member and have, must have decent credit, able to acquire their own mortgage. Now through this program, the Habitat Office in Plymouth, they would screen the applicants. They would work with them on the financing. They would act as a resource for financing and help them to find the financing. But they, the person has to be able to get the mortgage on their own. The anticipated start date for building homes would be late 2019. Brent Martin is the architect. I had a conversation with him a couple days ago. The grant administrator is hired. And it's through the Neighborhood Development Association, which I think is in South Bend of Mishawaka. Now, the possibility for the grant is up to $40,000 per home. And what they would be building is 1,200 square feet homes, and they hope to keep the price under $100,000. Now, there's a need to identify the purchaser of the home when the grant app goes in, and they the applicants have to be able to wait until construction, until it's done. That's been the problem Brent said in the past when they did a project in Plymouth. The challenge for Argus, because this is a great opportunity, but our challenge is lots are generally donated by the town for their match. And they are looking for three lots in Argus. And they're ready to do the environmental study right now. So we have this possibility if we can donate three lots, it would be a great asset to three families because that would be significant if the lot is donated, if they could get up to $40,000 toward their mortgage, toward their home. Is there any size in these lots or restriction or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Does the town have three lots? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> I don't know if we get started. That's my first question. Not only the house, the town has some land pieces here and there. That's why I asked about the size. I'm not sure any of it's big enough to be lots. But what about the three lots that we have in Habitat? Would they be willing to take on Those are separate programs. Even though deep buyers with Habitat would be doing all well, the screening with this program. And the church is going to the garage this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I'm in the mood to go buy something that is turn around and donate it. Sometimes it's cheaper. Well, I understand. <laughs> now, I presented this also to ACDC Monday evening. Was there any was there a okay. gift with the ACDC? I mean, I, do you guys have possible lots to be given out as well? No, not this time. They're making a purchase of lots, but they committed those to homes. Exactly. They would. Yeah. We've always got yeah, we've got the pretty much the construction lined up on that and everything. So as soon as we've got that purchase from the school, which should happen here very soon. And we'll start busting down. And put, I think we're putting, in, we're putting in three houses in those six lots. Now, would it have to be the Argus? Would it have to be the town of Argus? Or could somebody, uh, like a land itself, <coughs> donate it to the town of Ingle? I, mean, I think a landowner could donate, but I don't have all the answers. George, you got enough of the big one. 
sitting down there right now on Cherry Street that could possibly end up you know, right off for them. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I thought they already went to Habitat, though. Yeah. No, no, no. The one on, the, on Cherry. That one's on Grove. Oh. The one on Grove and Apple sits on the corner. Okay, it sits on the corner right as Habitat. The one yeah. just I know there's right. three lots on it. Cherry Street, the center lot is where we had that house condemned and tore down, so that's an empty lot. So we're right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. George, you have to, you have to uh, condemn the church mm -hmm. down here as well. Mm -hmm. the, well, the, I think that's a lot of room for your house, George. Yeah, yeah. there's <laughs> that's a swamp it. right now. They can fix that. All of a sudden, Mark out there. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look into there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what a, let's let's look into it. Yeah, yeah. 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 See what we can find. Definitely. Yeah. Because that would be a great opportunity for us. Yeah. So you're looking for how many? Three right now? Yes. Three. Argus is three. Bourbon has already donated for three homes. They've done the match. They've donated lots already. We would like to do the more. Okay. I still still up one on Cherry Street. Cherry Street. Turn down the others. Okay. Yeah, let's see. You need to help people. I'm trying to get a hold of some people on. No, actually, I was just reading on. Okay, well, that sounds like a good idea. We're going to. I'm not pursuing lots, but I'm bringing the program to you. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll work on some lots because I got put my name on that one. <laughs> Salary ordinance. Everybody get a chance. It's very lengthy compared to the one page we used to have. It does not have to be passed tonight, but it does have to be passed at the next meeting with a quorum has to be here. So if anybody doesn't think they're going to be here next meeting, which is the 19th of, that's the week before Christmas, so usually everybody's still here and we all leave that next week. But she supplied the draft, that's why it's on here. If you want to pass it on first reading and we don't have to suspend the rules or anything like that, you know, we definitely need a quorum on the next meeting. Does anybody have any questions? I know Suzanne is not getting it until late, so, um, yes. I need my daddy. Is that in your package? No, it's in your Dropbox. Sorry. I did read through it, though. I have a question on the clerk salary that was in there. She has not had a chance Clerk's to read Okay. <laughs> no, but too, too many times I understand it. Okay. 
I just, I'm here to answer any questions. It went from two pages to 11, and I understand that that's quite lengthy, but anything that is a benefit to an employee is taxable income, and so it all had to be listed in there. Um, we've never done that before. We've never put uniforms, and we've never put the cell stipends and the clothing allowances and everything into the <coughs> They, they tax all of it. All of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Never used to. So if, if, they, if they use a town vehicle to go home or keep it at their house, isn't that? That is a perk, but, and that is considered, yeah. yes, part of their mm -hmm. benefits. Yeah. I paid three dollars and forty cents a day for tax purposes when I had to come to get That's what I paid. Three four. Yes. Yeah. Right. They have to keep logs <clears throat> not the police, but um, mm -hmm. most other you know, they yeah. have to keep logs and all of that. So, so I'm like I said, I'm suggesting we at least pass it on the first reading. If you guys have any questions, please call my office. You know, we work really hard on it. We're trying to get it, you know, the right way. And New Focus HR absolutely helped us through every step of the process, which of course, nice. we've never had nice. that before. So, um, but we, we had a lot of lengthy meetings. Jamie was in on some of them and along with the handbook. This is all part of it. Next is job descriptions, just so you know, ahead of the time. So. I make a motion that we pass the salary ordinance 2019 as it's written on the first reading. No. Well. No. no. You don't want to pass it on the first reading? No. Okay. I thought you were going to look at it. Yeah. Well, you um, can pass it on the first one. Okay. And we'll make sure everybody's here, though. I'm sorry. Okay. It's my fault that it was not in the packet. Mm -hmm. I didn't send an email, but I didn't know it was in the packet. So. All right. Ordinance 2018 09 policy order for the that's separate. Everybody looking over? Same as last year, from year before, from year before. I already checked to see if they said like this has passed and adopted December. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Second, any further discussion? Come on, get a new kid on the block or something like that. Okay. I don't get 20 on the block. Okay. All right, we've no got idea. a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, under new business, I'm going to bring this up. The fire department. Um, in the budget last year, we decided to use X amount of dollars for the town did to give to the department to use for building. I've been built going beyond the 200 the state uses. Um, been getting in prices for all members, a pair of pants, shoes, two shirts, jacket, it would be a dress uniform. And this guy will spur because the guys are wanting to get more involved in the community, do color guards, um, funerals, we have a rash of funerals, and um, kind of like EMS, we don't really look <coughs> presentable with our old clothes. 
So Mark's asking permission, <coughs> and we're asking permission to go ahead and spend the four thousand that was allotted because it's over the twenty-five hundred dollars. We're still in discussion on how to come up with the other four thousand dollars that it could cost us. We're waiting on our second quote right now on the uniforms. If, with that being said, he's also asking, and the department's asking, to go as cheap, we're not going to go cheap, but we want to go with good quality at a cheap price, I'll put it that way. And if we can do that, can we get 4,000 more to purchase the whole uniform set for all 30? And right now there's not 30 of us, but to yeah. do that. So that's, that's, what we're, that's what the fire department's asking. We've already been allocated to four thousand. We're just asking if we can get the other four thousand and go from there. Am I correct there, Mark? Yeah, out of this year's budget. Out of, yeah, and use it out of yeah. this year's budget. Because we have thirty after payroll, we will still have thirty-one thousand dollars in our budget. Thirty-one six six eight. I had to get that for us. And it's just another step because we want to start doing other things like if we go to the library, if we go to the school, we want to be presentable. It's not in your package, John. Huh? No, I had to do that. So there's still, like I said, after the payroll, there's still thirty-one thousand dollars. It's in the current budget. It's in the yes. Yes. There again, the guys know the shoes are for that. They're not to be worn to work. They're not to be, you know. But when we do things like the carnival, the uh, carnival, excuse me, the uh, kickoff festival, I'll get it straight. <coughs> we look more professional. That would come out of the clothing? Uh, uh, it could come out of the clothing. Yeah, boom. Yes. Isn't that? Or was that? Yeah, that's right. Yes. But I'm just saying, where's the initial four thousand at? That's in shows it's all on here. There. Explain at least a little bit. I think it was putting to the supplies and that we were gonna use it as supplies. Okay. But other supplies? Yeah, but you can pretty Keep much, it, yeah. you can move money between the funds. Right, we can use it, to, we can categorize it even as equipment if we yeah. had it. We yeah, have yeah, some so firefighters and they basically full pay yet. Way. So we can move some of that money. We could also. I know you're going to make 500 bucks off of me because I didn't make enough to get full pay this year. <laughs> there we go. So there again, we're asking, Mark as a department head is asking permission to be able to, since it's over $2,500. I'll make that motion. The money's there. Just got to put it where it needs to be. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I thank you and I know the department. Thank you. Anybody else have any other new business? Um, I have a couple things. I was asked by Jane Hall, the library, to announce a couple things, just as reminders. Thursday, tomorrow, um, they're having an instant pot class, rock pot class. Um, Saturday, December 8th, from noon to 2, Santa's going to be at the library, so bring your kids. And also December 8th, from 10 to 1.30, they're having a cookie walk. So, um, if you have any specifics or questions, just at, reach out to Jane Hall at the library. Or Mrs. Sarnay. Santa will be there. Santa will be there. Oh, yeah, also, one more thing for new business. Um, I, did rewrite, I did write that UTV ordinance or at least a draft of it um, and I sent it out too late um, so I don't know if we should take some time to review that or you know definitely okay well that's step number one that's closer than we were 
I did re I did review it and I was very vocal and I had uh, expressed some concerns to Bill and he's willing to look at that and write some things in there so I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I, I mean I'll just talk about some quick specifics over it. Um, so pretty much we're trying to get off-road vehicles to be allowed here in the community. Um, I just pretty much brought in the golf, uh, golf cart ordinance and readapted it to golf cart and off-road vehicles. I updated uh, the definition through the state, the state's definition, um, but I also included some things um, like several different names, utility task vehicle, utility train, side-by-side, -side, recreational, off-highway vehicle, and there's, you can call them so many different names. Uh, so I list as many as possible. Um, I left it up to the chief of police to make the final call on a vehicle that's been put together or, you know, has different parts, you know, if it's like half wildcat, you know, or, or whatever. You know, I've seen them before, you know, if you grew up out in the middle of nowhere, you've done things like this. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I think it's pretty fair that the chief of police makes that decision. Um, Another thing is that uh, no no handlebars, nothing less than a steering wheel and a foot pedal to engage the the, the, the motor. Um, just simply because finger triggers and handlebars, you, you can you can get pretty pretty wide range with those kinds of uh, vehicles. Um, but other than that, it's pretty it's pretty specific to where the golf cart ordinance is. Um, uh, I did change the uh, the, the, the cost. Um, it was twenty five dollars for four years, I believe they said. I changed it to twenty five dollars per year, which I thought was pretty fair. Um, so, uh, it, and and what Sean was mentioning was that um, the one thing I did forget in here was uh, specifically stating OEM exhaust for any of these vehicles. We do live in a, a quiet community um, and. So this is definitely something we negotiated on, and hopefully we can get this figured out and get it passed for ever and for older folks to be able to drive in, drive into town. Oh, and, and Mr. Dean back there. Yeah. I got a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. All right. Thank you. I know this is not on there, but Jamie, update real quick for us, will you? Woodland Trail? We're almost done. Probably tomorrow we'll finish up. So we still got to fix the road and all that, but it, it's a mess. But it's coming. Good. I want to thank you guys for all the time you put in out there. I know there's been other things pushed off, and people complain about this, people complain about that. But if they said they all, all picture what's being done, they would, they would probably say, "Oh, okay." I, we can, I, can, see, I can see where we can be. Second line instead of first in line this week. So well, claims they've been picking up the leaves and yeah, I know. everything yeah. else. That mm -hmm. all they've been doing, they've had a full plate. Yeah, yes. Especially with the weather we've had, getting yeah. the leaves. The guys have done a good job. Okay, um, Suzanne's got a boatload over here for us. I was contacted by Culver. I don't know all the details for this. It's a program. They're asking for people within the area and. They wanted somebody in government, that's why they contacted me, to take part. This is occurring in April, and it's just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, but it's a Walkability Action Institute. It's a program. They're trying, to, it's, the CDC is involved. They're trying to promote activity for health within communities. So I told them I was interested. I haven't absolutely committed yet. And I think it's a program you have to apply for, so I don't even know what's going to happen. But you learn more about walking, how it helps health, and how to incorporate that into your community. So that's a possibility that's coming up. Donnie Ritzma from MACOG had contacted me this week. There's a program. The problem is it's, the app is due Friday, so it's just not feasible to get it completed, but he's going to keep me in touch with the next one, which may come out in May. It's for trails, so we need to get our trail more specific, more planned, so that if, when these programs come, we're ready to jump The one that connects in part? Yes. <coughs> so we just need to be more, get things more specific. Stellar announcement is 
it's been changed from the 10th to the 11th. So that will be Tuesday morning between 10 and 10.30. And if anybody's interested in going, you can go to the county building, second floor, and uh, in that meeting room. That's where the announcement, will, the phone call will be taken. One other thing, this is from the task force. I've worked on completing these. These we've talked about for a long time. These are folders inviting people to participate. I guess be involved more than participate. It's a letter of invitation. We have numerous openings on boards and commissions. So this is a folder asking for participation. And in here is the vision of Argus, which comes from our plan, our comprehensive plan. And each of the boards and commissions, just a summary of what's needed. We're talking about plan commission, what we need. So this goes through how many members, what the members need to be. So this is put together for people of, that are interested. We don't want to just hand them out too casually. If people have an interest. You know, we do have this ready now. Because we do need to get people involved. That's what we challenge you to become involved and help shape the future of the artist community as part of the letter. So, we do have these. We'll have some here at the office. We handed a few out the other night. That was through the task force, and I think that's all the moment that I have. Okay, thank you. Anybody got anything else? All right. Now we'll jump to claims. The total docket for December the 5th of 2018 is $320,210.05. The top five claims are as follows. Number one is IMPA at $168,190.31. Number two is payroll number 24 at $34,898.39. Number three is Anthem at $17,684.31. Number four or five is, or I'm sorry, four is Republic Services at $12,296.54. And number five is Indiana Department of Revenue Sales Tax at $8,343.69. The top five claims total $241,413.24 and represent 75% of the total docket. I move to accept claims 1451 through 1518. Second. Motion is second to accept claims. <coughs> Any other questions or discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I don't know what happened with the recycle schedule last week. They were off a week. They didn't pick up one. Okay, on 11 14, if you looked at your schedule, it said that they would pick up, they wouldn't pick up. It was in there twice. We sent out. Uh, the stuff that said that we had a new schedule and that if you followed it, if you went in order, um, it would have been a pickup week. So last week, would, when it fell through the stuff, people were getting their weeks mixed up. Because I know I, I drove through town, even myself, put it off my schedule I had, and they didn't pick up. <laughs> so we took it back in, and we took it out for the next week, and at 4 o'clock, it still wasn't picked up. So I had myself called Republicans at 8. What's going on? Oh, we have, we changed the schedule. It's like, oh, nice. Could we get an alert? I mean, seriously, that's what she said. Well, okay, when we sent it out, we noticed that then the November 14th or whatever was, I, they never alerted us that they changed it last week. You see what I'm saying? We noticed that the two Novembers were together. We sent out another schedule way back in the spring, but I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get it. That was the wrong one. 
Yeah. 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 So, so, anyway. Just saying that. Anyway, yeah. it's on schedule for next week. Yeah. Because yeah. it is this week. This week. So yeah. What do we do when our bins are purple like ours is? I put mine in the rental house. Okay. And that was really full. Of <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it really was a pain in the butt that week because I mean people left it out overnight and it was. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Okay, well, and I don't blame the town. I'm just saying that I guess that's I did not know that they didn't pick it up on the scheduled day. So, you know, I mean, it's next. I'm not blaming the town. I'm just saying that it got messed up. The communication yeah, I took that this morning, though. It was overnight, and it was still full. Of well, but again, I didn't hear that they didn't pick it up on the scheduled day. We, we, so, we, we, we can fix it. We got it fixed. You know. I make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. Thank